How's it going, boys and girls? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to the Eden of Grisaya. To be more specific, welcome back to the bloodbath that Yuji is creating as he infiltrates this lovely island or, or ship or w whatever the fuck you can call this base of operations that uh, Heath Oslo has. He's just killing everyone that he comes across, pretty much mowing down enemies towards his path or along the path to Heath Oslo. And... How lovely it is, but what also happened in the last episode, besides a bunch of murdering on Yuji's part, was I believe the girls were able to identify, or Sakaki and Kazuki to be more specific, were able to identify the locations of the bombs set up by uh, Heath Oslo's men, and now all they really need to do is cut the big-ass wire at the bottom of the ocean that connects uh, the Thanatos system to their backup power system. So... I'm sure we'll be seeing that very soon, but right now we're still here in the scene of the bloodbath, so let us continue. 200 meters before he even reached the hallway, Travis knew that something was terribly wrong. A fierce firefight had raged along this narrow corridor, leaving all of the lights in the ceiling shattered, and the air was thick with some smoke and the pungent smell of gunpowder. The dark fluid covering most of the floor was probably blood. The stench was so strong that he nearly gagged. And, at the far end of the passage, an area shrouded in darkness. He could sense the presence of something monstrous. What the hell happened here? After receiving a report from his men over the radio, he'd sent in reinforcements and then made his way over himself. Only a few minutes had passed. How could all of this have happened so quickly? Travis peered down the gloomy corridor, hands trembling against his gun. The hairs on, his, on the back of his neck were standing up on end. This didn't make any sense. Ice-cold terror crawled slowly up his legs and spread exorably throughout his body. There wasn't a single survivor left in this hallway, was there? If anything was moving in those shadows, it had to be the Grim Reaper himself. <laughs> he needed to call for backup now. Before anything else, they had to repair the lighting somehow. After that, they'd need to clean up all the corpses cluttering the corridor, and hopefully locate Kazumi Yuji among them. Clicking his tongue in frustration, Travis tried to lift up his radio, but his left hand knocked against something, and the transceiver fell to the ground. He had no idea what he just bumped against. It didn't really matter though. Bending down, he tried to pick up the radio, but found that he couldn't grasp it properly. There was something strange going on with his left hand. He reached out to grasp his, its wrist with his right hand and found himself touching a strange rubbery object covered in a warm, sticky fluid. Oi. Uso. Daro. Oh my god, his hand got cut off and he had no idea! Trying, he was trying to move his hand and pick up his shit. But he couldn't. Because there was no hand. That is so freaky. Before he could feel pain or shock, Travis was paralyzed by sheer terror. His breath caught in his throat. He'd forgotten even how to scream. And a moment later, he heard a voice behind him. Drop the gun. <gasps> I don't think he dropped the gun. Spinning around frantically, Travis aimed his pistol at the voice and pulled the trigger. But the bullet seemed to cut through empty air. It felt like he'd taken a shot at a ghost. <laughs> By now his voice was a hysterical shriek. Still unable to even see the enemy, he pointed the pistol blindly into the darkness and pulled the trigger again and again. I don't think he's getting his target. With every shot, the absurdly large caliber revolver jumped up like a raging bull, nearly jerking out of his hand nearly in er, nearly jerking out of his hand entirely, my bad. Only five of its oversized bullets could fit in the cylinder. Once you fired all of them, you had to use both hands to swing out the double lock cylinder and push more bullets into it. But right now, Travis only had one hand to work with. With only one bullet remaining in the cylinder, he hesitated with his finger on the trigger, and a split second later, he heard a peculiar sound. By the time he realized it was the sound of a blade slicing through the air, his right hand was severed at the wrist, 
and his gun clattered loudly to the to the floor. And he is not having a good time. The terror was overwhelming, and as Travis screamed wildly, overcome by fear and despair, Kazumi Yuji appeared before him, drenched in the blood of other men, his eyes glittering in the darkness. <laughs> this was the gaze of a large predator studying a defenseless piece of prey. Once again, Travis's breath caught in his throat. I told you to drop it, didn't I? If you're going to blubber like a baby about it, don't carry that toy around in the first place. Rest in peace, Travis. The quiet words resonated throughout Travis's trembling body. But before he could respond, a sharp snick followed, and everything went dark. By the time he realized he'd been stabbed in the neck, his life was already over. Had it really been necessary to kill this man? The question did occur to me, but I didn't feel any real guilt. If Oslo had come to face me himself, his men wouldn't have had needed to die. Right. And there wouldn't be any need for war if the leaders of nations could just slug it out to settle their differences. War is nothing but unnecessary death on a massive scale. For some reason, that thought made the act of murder feel inconsequential, even meaningless. My own cold-bloodedness disturbed me a little. Fighting back a powerful wave of fatigue, I turned my gaze downward. A new puddle of blood was spreading across the floor. Travis's radio lay in the middle of it, still clutched in his severed hand. Ah. Ha ha ha. At the sound of a familiar voice, I bent down and picked up the machine. I'll be with you shortly. Sit tight. With that brief reply, I hurled the radio to the ground and crushed it under my foot. Well, of course. Yeah, maybe. Ah, there's the other boy. You know, I kind of keep forgetting about him, but I guess there's really one more obstacle that Yuji has to face before he gets to Oslo, and that's Yuji. And apparently, that's actually the voice actor from the anime. That that that's actually Yuji's voice actor. I, I guess we're back at, uh, at this lovely mess. Oh, and how deep are we going, 200? Or are we going the full 600? アンゼンが確約されている作業などそこらの女にでもできますが今この場でこんな無謀とも言える危険な深海作業を託すことのできる女はそう積んでれ嫌だ嫌だといつつも結局は従順なまでに僕と次一人の男のために命を張れるそん
ですよミチル様今の私にはミチル様がとても輝いて見えます、うん、はいというわけでね元気出して行ってみましょう,うどうでもいいけどちゃっちゃしろしあんまワニワニしてっと邪魔が入るのよわかったわかったからもうちょっとゆっくり怖いから普通に怖いからいいですかみちる様今みちる様が右手に持っているのが酸素アセチレンバーナーです海底に着床したら左手でバルブを開き右手のトリガーを引けば自動着火します燃焼時間はおよそ6分その時間内に海底の電源ケーブルを切断してください水中であっても煙が大量に出ますし作業時は遮光しますので手元はほとんど見えませんぐっとトーチを押し込んだ手の感触を頼りに切り進めてください分かったわよ行けばいいんでしょう行けばどう作業の方は進んでる Probably not. はいお姉さま順調ですさりげなくずうずうしい子ねあなたを妹にした覚えはないわよ風見さんのお姉さまは私のお姉さまです違いますか違いますでもそうねこの仕事をやり遂げたら考えてあげてもいいわよはいお任せください頑張ってみちる様を沈めます基本的には有能だし素直で可愛いんだけどどこか微妙にずれてるのよねおおやもしだってねばれつあげるまあいいわできれば30分以内で作業を終わらせてこれが終わったらどうすんの棚ねえ棚ねえ棚とすのお姉ちゃん略して棚ねえイントネーションはあまねえと同じなんていうか他の呼び方はなかったのかしら一応ね本名のカズキからカズネーってのも考えたんだけどなんかダサくねつうか普通にありそうでつまんなくねまあいいけどちょっと田中このスーツ本当に大丈夫なんでしょうね Probably not. タナコもうグダグダ言ってないでさっさと作業を終わらせなさい遊びじゃないのよ小峰幸はさっさと沈める松島みちるはパッパと海底ケーブルを切るイリス・マキナあなたは対空監視に戻るウィーンあカズキこんなところにいたまあ周りは海だしねえどういう意味っていうかさカズキってちょっと目を離すとどっか行っちゃうっていうか結構チョロチョロするよね昔からそうだったそうかしらあの山にいた頃もなんか私ずっとカズキを探してたような気がするよいや、yeah? I remember that 一箇所にじっとしていても情報が入ってくるのなら私もじっとしているのだけれどやっぱり人間って不便よねシステムの一部だった頃が懐かしいわえいやだな今さらやっぱ戻るとか言わないでよ I don't think she can. 言ったでしょ今さら戻れないわよそれに何て言うか今の環境もそこそこ気に入っているわどの辺が気に入ったのなんかみんな私の扱いが雑えあごめんあの子たちなんかやらかした早速変なあだ名をつけられたわ変なあだ名が気に入ったってこと私にあだ名をつける人はたくさんいたけれど面と向かってそれを口にする人ってあまりいなかったしそういう雑な扱いって結構新鮮面白いわ変なのぼっち仲間の榊由美子なら理解してくれると思うけどあそうだ榊さんが呼んでるよ私それで和樹を探してたんだふん相手が政治家や実業家なら
電話であっても1時間で45万円の相談料を取る私を呼び寄せるとはまた豪気な Jesus Christ. 雑な扱いが面白いんでしょっていうか相談にお金取るんだ政治家や実業家はただのものを一切信用しないからよあ,あやっと来たそれで私に何か用用があるのは私じゃないわギャレット隊員よ浮上してアンテナ V を流した途端にものすごい勢いでコールがあったわあらそう回線はそのみんなさんお待ちかねよそこのパソコンで話してお電話変わりましたタナトスですさあ今どこで何をしているはいそんなことを聞くために連絡してきたのですか状況が変わった爆弾が見つかったのですねああそうだ貴様の予想通り新宿の薬剤試験場で爆発物が発見された待機していた処理班を向かわせ現在は一時的な無力化が進んでいる問題はもう一つの新タワーの方だ一つ目の爆弾が見つかったことで慌てて増員をかけて新タワーに押しかけたら制圧前にタワーに引き込まれてしまったとか通信妨害による現場式の不備が原因だ誰もがその存在を認めていながら誰もが疑っていたいかなる思想いかなる要求があろうと複数の国家に対し弓を引くような真似を一回のテロ組織がするだろうかヒースオスロがこれまでに取った戦法を見ればわざと襲撃させたネストに核廃棄物を残しておくことで脅しをかける程度のことだったしそれで十分だった脅しをかけただけで株価を操作することが可能だし事実オスロはアポロン製薬の株をほとんど全て売却しているのだけれどまあ複数の手順を踏んでいるから気づくものはごく一部でしょう。今や対テロの専門家は投資家であるという冗談があるけれど政治的な思想や宗教じみた要求の見えないテロ行為は市場操作が目的であると考えて間違いないそんなどこか楽観したような空気の中で半ば現実の痛みとして喉元に突きつけられたナイフを直接目にして急に慌て出したということでしょう今その場に何人残っているのかしら様の言っていることはよくわからんが今この場に残っているのは私とサーズの本部長だけだ。Ah, no worries, Captain Garrett. I, I never understand a lot of what goes on in anything I'm reading. でしょうね。おそらく他の方たちは思う存分戦うための準備とでも言い残して席を立ったのでしょうけど、実際は責任を押し付けて逃げ出したのね。お前に何がわかるその場に残っているのがガッツのある軍人と逃げ出したところで受け入れ先のない天下り役人だけだというのは理解していますだからこそたった一本の細い糸にすがるようにして私に連絡してきたのでしょうつながらない回線を何度も叩いてまで全てはお見通しというわけか私を誰だと思っているのめんどくさい話はいい。私に何ができるいや私は何をすればいい突き詰めれば選択肢は2つ逃げるか立ち向かうかよそして私の弟は立ち向かう道を選んだだから私も自分の後始末だけはしますあなたも立ち向かう意思があるから連絡してきたのでしょうだったら働きなさい足を止めて立ち止まり神に祈る暇があるのなら一歩でも前へそれが戦場というものよそうは言っても簡単には寝返りも打てないのが組織というものでしょ did JB get here? ハルデラさんこんな時のために備えて身軽さを信条としてきたサーズであっても室長が不在のままでは浮き足立つのも仕方のないことですそこに大塚本部長はおられますかお
私が市ヶ谷に戻ります現場の指揮を任せてくださいすまないカルデラ君 They'll just let her come back just like that? 行くのはい私も切り落とした尻尾の後始末ぐらいは自分でします戻ると言っても船で送ってあげることはできないのよどうするつもり She gonna pull a Yuji and swim? ミリエラ・スタンフィールド注意のヘリが戻ってきます、oh. 彼女に送ってもらうつもりです OK that makes more sense my bad スタンフィールド注意には4時間も前に逮捕状が出ています戻れば彼女の身柄は拘束されますよ彼女の逮捕状を保留できるのは赤坂とラングレーにパイプを持つ私だけでしょう私も赤坂に戻ります彼女には一旦我が国の空母まで飛んでもらいそこで輸送ヘリに乗り換えさせてから迎えに来てもらいましょうそうあなたも行ってしまうのね私にはあなたの弟が作る未来というものを見届ける義務がありますそれに東京のそば屋に旦那を残してきてしまいました彼を死なせたくありませんあ、come on, he can live by himself じゃあ残してきた面倒な仕事はあなたたちに任せてもいい後のことは私たちにお任せくださいこれ以上は素人に頼りませんそれが大人としてのけじめというものです分かったわだったら私たち素人はここでの作業を終えたら予定通りこのまま楽園へ逃げ込むことにしますあなたたちも今回の件が全て片付いたら弟の島に遊びにいらっしゃいな yeah, just don't kill him. ええぜひ島の場所を後でメールしてください I honestly don't think she will. It, it, it sort of doesn't seem like it. So, ne? Ato de internet to the shirabete, chizu o kruva. Panatos system ga internet to the shirabemono? He do i joke, ne? Ningen nante, so regrai de chodo ino yo. Eto. Tsumari, what does that you are doing? So, reba ino cano. 何も変わらないわケーブルを切ってさっさと逃げ出すだけそれで私たちにできることはもうおしまいあとは大人たちが自分たちの責任で後始末をしてくれるそうよ、yeah. I'll roll with it. それでいいのかな大人のやることなんて信用できないというのなら私たちも戻る今出て行った市ヶ谷と赤坂の2人に協力して。イリスマキナにテロリストを射殺させて、シンタワーに仕掛けられた爆弾を小峰サチに解除させるそれは一応そういうプランも考えていなかったわけじゃないわ。そのためのテストはもう実施済みだし。それはいくらなんでもむちゃくちゃよ。多少の造形があったところで、所詮彼女たちは素人なのよ。そんなのやってみなきゃわからないじゃない。挑戦って大切よねコラダメよわあコラなんて言われて怒られたの私初めてかもねもう一回怒ってみてえちょ急に言われてももう一回だけねこコ,コラダメだダメよ Well, this conversation's gotten weird. Taihen, Nazida Kawakara Nai Keredo, Kuni Sakaki Yumiko Kawaiku Natawa Nankasa Yapa Kazuki the Hendayoni. You're now just finding this out? So Kashira Kawaiku Nai Atoa Sone CD no Shrink Gaumaku Akira Nakte Eat the Naru Sakaki Yumiko Toka. What does she know? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, it looks like it's time to skedaddle. So, Gokuro Sama. Matsima Michiru to Kizai no Shuyo Oetara, Tadachi ni Senko Ste Gen Kaiki or Ridatsimas. Antena Bui no Kaishu or Wasrenaide. Yokai! Sate, Watashi no Senso wa Kore de Oshimai. Is it? Senso ga Watanunara, 
女は何をする戦場から男が戻ってくるのご飯を作って待つ And in that case, that means they're going to be waiting for Yuji. Hi, say, Kai. Yakete shimatta ye o tatenao shite, otoko no kaeri o matsno ga, no kosareta onna no shigoto des. Guzu guzu shite ru jikan wa nai wa yo. Watashi tachi no tsugi no shigoto wa, mihama gakuen no saiken na no da kara. Well, alrighty, back on the island. Or ship, or whatever this is. Contaminant. A refreshing, a contaminate, a refreshing sea breeze, my bad, with pungent paint and machine oil, then add in the stink of fuel, a bit like that of a kerosene heater. That's the smell of a battleship. It was a bit too unpleasant to inspire any real nostalgia, but as I stepped out onto the deck, the humidity, temperature, and smell of the wind did bring back some memories of the past. The deck seemed to sway diagonally under my feet, pulling my body to the left. But the ship was still in the water. The actual swaying was probably happening inside my inner ears. Glancing down at my wobbling legs, I noticed a number of dark red stains forming on the deck around me. It took a moment for me to figure out that I was bleeding. Until now, I hadn't even realized I was injured. A brief examination of my body revealed countless minor wounds where I'd been grazed by bullets or struck by, shrap by shrapnel? Whatever. I'd assumed that my unsteady gait and aching head were relating, or related to the drugs I'd been administered, but the blood loss might have been a factor as well. Not that I could be bothered to bind the wounds. My mind was clouded. You don't stop to think on a battlefield, and you don't feel pain either. There was something here. Something murderous and hateful polluting the air with its presence. Something that made my stomach churn queasily. This wasn't a hungry predator watching its prey, or a crazed murderer stalking its victim. I couldn't sense any emotion whatsoever, just a single-minded desire to kill. If the Grim Reaper really existed, this was exactly how it would feel to meet him. It wasn't an unfamiliar sensation. Many years before, I'd learned how to shut my ears on the battlefield. You can't literally squeeze your ears closed like you can with your eyes. In the course of a battle, you're assaulted by all sorts of noises, conveying all sorts of information. Terrified screams, furious roars, desperate pleas. Whenever your mind processes the meaning of these sounds, your body grows heavier. Your arm stops swinging your knife. Your finger freezes on the trigger. And so you shut your ears. You hear the sounds, but you don't think about them. Your mind turns itself off, and your body kills on its own. You don't feel a thing. I was in the presence of someone who'd learned how to do this. Someone with a cold, black void in the center of their soul. Ah! Yeah. Zeeven to yarareta mitai da ne. Nii-san. It is, uh... It is other... Other boy. What the hell are you? Nantonaku. Wakatte wa irun da ro. Design Soldier Project. シュポーン計画第3期試験隊 TP427 そうだねラングレー風に言うのなら ET02 と言ったところかな Why is your tie not tucked in your vest? That's really weird Feels like I'm looking into a badly made mirror Pretty nauseating honestly これは兄さんの遺伝子を複製して作られた人間だからね似ているのは当たり前だ no, the face, the eyes, the outfit, the hair, the grin. I don't know. It just doesn't look like Yuji right here. This looks like a completely different person. What's with the hair color and your eyes? So, da ne. Dochira ka to iye ba, nee san ni nite iru no kana. Oh, okay. Live kara hei flick genkai o sousa shite, saibou shi no sokushin ni yori, shinsei saibou o katsei ka. ヘロメアの強制リライトで成長促進を繰り返した結果だ Fair enough. シンプな言い方になって恐縮だけどまあ天才の遺伝子を持つ証とでも言う感じかな逆に言えば俺たちの姉さんは誰の手を借りるでもなく生まれながらにして天才だったって話になるんだけど Well, I don't think smarts are 
or intelligence is genetic, but what do I know? I'm just an idiot. You're actually happy about being a genius. You can't be anything special. There wasn't a day of my sister's life that she didn't regret her own brilliance. People who don't need to work hard to succeed always fall behind in sheer experience. And experience is more valuable than any talent. Oh, I bet we are. それに、俺をただのコピーだと思わない方がいい。基本的なポテンシャルは同じだよ。臆病なのも一緒。切れると手がつけられないのも一緒。Do <笑> you piss yourself when you murder people too? これは薬に頼らなければいけない兄さんとは違う。試験の度に兄さんと比較されるのはもううんざりだ。そろそろ。you know, that's actually an interesting point. I mean, cloning is a thing, just not to this science fiction sort of degree that we see before us and what we've seen in other sorts of media. You gotta think, like, okay, if this ever did happen, how would the clone feel about being compared to someone else with that someone else being the original? I don't know, I mean... I guess you can kind of relate it to how Yuji was always compared to his sister, in, in a way, maybe, I don't know. I don't need them. Why? I am human. Last time I checked. I don't know why you're saying that. I don't know you're Oh my god, no! No! Ah, oh, fuck, dude. I have no idea what to do, because I feel like if we use the drugs, then yeah, we really are a monster. But then I think we'll be able to kick ass. And if we don't use the drugs, we remain human, but I think we're going to lose. Fuck. Alright, well, I guess I get to contemplate this one. They actually gave us a choice. Wow. <laughs> I was wondering if that was ever going to happen. So that means there's a good ending and a bad ending. I'm assuming. Shit. Alright, well, I guess I'll figure out what to do next time. Stardust Syndrome again? Alright, whatever. Wait, what percent are we on? 88? Yeah, we are really close to being done. Fuck. Alright, yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to think about this one. Please guys, no spoilers in the comments. But then again, I'll probably get to recording the next episode before uh, this video even goes out. But yeah, no, no, no spoilers. I would like to sort of think about this on my own. And I'll come to some sort of conclusion in the next episode. I just really hope I don't choose the wrong, you know. Anyways... Thank you very much for watching this episode, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more. I mean, we are definitely almost done, and man, it's it's getting interesting. Alrighty then, I will see you guys in the next episode when I make my decision, what whatever it'll be, because right now I'm I'm absolutely unsure.